Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Ghost Chronicles International. It is. I am Ron Kolick, your host, the gatekeeper of the realm of the unknown, the unexplained, and the unbelievable New England Zone Van Helsing. With me, all the way across the pond from the land of the Red Dragon, is the gold standard in ghost hunting, Mr. Steve Parsons. You know this gold standard stuff? I've been thinking about that over the last few weeks, and. Do you know, it's actually quite sad that I'm the gold standard in ghost hunting. Using common sense and good methods have made me the gold standard. Anybody could be the gold standard. You just have to do the job properly. It's not possible to do it unless you get incredibly lucky, like we have been once in 25 years, you can't do an investigation in one visit. Well, first of all, the, the first um, thing is, is there anything worth investigating? There are thousands of haunted buildings um, by reputation around the country. Every castle, every old creaky damp building has a ghost. Um, so is it worth investigating? So what, what, what we look for, first of all, is th are there ex people's reports that are of interest? Um, are there contemporary reports, visitors, uh, to, to people that work there, people who live in a location? Uh, are they having experiences that, that sound interesting? Then is there a historical component? I don't mean that the building has a, a checkered history or an interesting history. I mean, do are there any historical uh, reports of, of previous occupants or, or uh, had you know similar experiences? So, is there a historical component to people's experiences? Is there a contemporary, modern um, component to the experience? Is it something that we can actually? Are there any questions? That we can, that we could, we can conceive of answering. If, for example, you you have vague sightings as as you do in a lot of castles uh, throughout the UK of white figures and white ladies, and um, then I, I don't think you could ever really conduct an investigation. There's there's no question to answer. Um, people will continue to have experiences, and you being there is is probably not going to do anything um, but there are certain types of experience and Pembroke Castle um, is one of those sorts of locations where the the nature of the experiences suggest that there is a pattern um, some degree of uniformity to people's experiences um, which suggests that there, there might be a, a chance of determining at least can we eliminate a natural cause? Um, can it be something within the environment that might be triggering these unusual experiences? We're in the chapel, but the chapel has, I think, one of the more interesting and resilient ghost stories attached to it. And one of the, the more credible, in my opinion. Members of the, sta of the castle staff, when closing up for the, at the end of the day, in the early evening have reported a figure some describe it as a priest some a monk others a small figure perhaps resembling a child being seen drifting through this room ignoring what the member of staff is doing so we will we'll talk to to the people who are there uh, we can't be there 24 hours a day seven days a week it's not it's it, it, it's just not practical it's not possible but there are people who work at these locations or live at these locations um, and there are people who visit these locations uh, particularly in a tourist area like Pembrokeshire and so what we're trying to find out is is there any pattern in uniformity to their experiences so we go along and we, we, we try and meet the people and try wherever possible to gain a first-hand account um, all too often it's a friend of a friend or uh, the lady that used to work in the gift shop um, but often you can get first-hand experiences and indeed many of the staff who currently work at Pembroke Castle have had experiences that they consider to be paranormal. Gemma I was talking to Howard and he was telling me that a lot of the staff here have had experiences 
and you yourself were telling me that uh, was it around Christmas time? Yes, around Christmas time we had a party in the cafe over there and we were sat upstairs, me and another colleague, and we saw over here there was lights coming up the stairs, the steps and down the steps. Um, there was nothing on in there, going like lights or anything, but there was lights going up and down the steps and we didn't know what it was. First of all, getting to know the person and, and also letting them get to know us because if we are going to develop any form of investigation we have to develop a relationship uh, a, a relationship based on trust a mutual respect for one another gaining um, an understanding of the person are they likely to be a person who exaggerates are they are they a storyteller do they believe in the paranormal um, what's in it for them you know um, because you know often the case people I, despite the popularity of the paranormal within the within the mainstream media and television and newspapers there are people you know who have a great deal to lose by sharing their paranormal stories um, you know socially they, they might be ridiculed um, have the mickey taken from them the modern Public Ghost Hunt is an interactive scary movie night. You go with a group of mates, um, you, know, you probably don't, you, you may even take your popcorn still, but you're having this shared, spooky, edgy experience. You know you're safe, really, but you know, there might be this, you know, there might be an evil demonic spirit just lurking, but the medium will, will keep you nice and safe and you remember to do all your your rituals before and after. So it's become a it's become a spooky night out. There's an old saying, clothes maketh the man. And in terms of ghost hunting, modern ghost hunting, flight cases maketh the ghost hunter. Uh, you can't be a ghost hunter unless you have uh, an extraordinary amount of cameras, of sound recorders, of ghost detecting devices machines that go bleep and that have exotic names um, each of these devices exists to make the job of detecting ghosts and spirits something that anybody can do and they just don't work um, they don't work because we don't know yet what a ghost is we can measure temperature and we can hope to verify when people say the room felt colder or warmer. Uh, we can measure humidity, we can measure the movement of air within a location, we can photograph, reproduce these blobs of light that people make claims about. But none of those are detecting ghosts. And we can, we can record voices um, on these boxes, we can hear sounds that sound like voices but there's no indication that they're the dead people talking to the living despite what a lot of people claim and so all of this equipment really is pretty meaningless and in fact most of it when you look at it in any form in any detail any depth uh, one of the most popular devices is the electromagnetic field meter the emf meter which is used to detect according to those that use them the electromagnetic emissions of ghosts and spirits or the manipulation of the ambient electromagnetic field by ghosts and spirits. Now, we don't know what ghosts and spirits are, so we can't assume that they're electromagnetic. And anyway, the basic flaw of this device is it was designed to measure the uh, known emissions from uh, microwave oven, faulty microwave oven doors from cell phone towers, from known man-made sources that people were concerned about uh, for, um, for reasons of health. Using one of those $25, $50 EMF meter devices, ghost detecting devices, is, is doubly flawed because you're only getting an amplitude readout. It's just telling you there is electromagnetic energy there and that there is more and less of it depending on how far the needle moves or how, how, how many lights light up, but you know nothing about the frequency, nothing about nothing further about it. 
Um, so it's like getting wet and not knowing whether somebody's thrown urine over you or, or tap water over you. You just know that you're wet. It's not a question of belief. Um, in fact, I absolutely believe people see ghosts, but it's the mechanics of the sighting that I'm interested in.